Hello everybody and welcome back to another satisfactory video. My name is Magneti and today we're going to be talking about how to start satisfactory. Now, that is a pretty loaded question here, but let's start with the basics. So first, you're going to want to take your Epic Games Launcher, open it up. Now, you might have Satisfactory, you might have bought it on Steam, so you would just do the same as what I'm going to do here in the Epic Games Launcher. So you would load up Steam, and then you would just go to Library, and then you would find Satisfactory, Satisfactory Early Access. Now, you can launch it from here, or you can launch it from the shortcut right here. So, I'm just going to launch it from right here. So then you'll see that Satisfactory logo pop up. And you'll get a, a loading screen. And then you'll get this Satisfactory loading screen. It'll do the boot logo. And then this is just early access info. It'll say, you know, hey, there's bugs and crashes and stuff in this game because it's an early access game. They've only got uh, tiers 1 to 7 implemented. Uh, there is a tier 8, but you can't unlock it, etc, etc. Just agree and proceed if you want to play the game. Otherwise, just close the game now and don't even bother loading it up if you don't want to agree and proceed because you won't be able to play the game. So then, since you'll be a new player, <clears throat> this won't... Uh, well, maybe it will be here. I don't know about that. But uh, you won't be able to continue or load a game. You'll only be able to do a new game since you won't have any load saves uh, up. So just click New Game. And then your biggest decision here comes along, and you have to choose what biome you want to start in. Uh, excuse me, your first biggest decision comes along. So now, for me, personally, I would say, see how it says ideal for first-time pioneers here? If you are a first-time pioneer, I would highly suggest starting in the grass fields, because these other three biomes have some pretty, uh, pretty harsh environments for new players. However, there are some... Uh, really good starting locations in the northern forest, uh, really nearby the northern forest area, and just the whole dune desert is uh, a pretty good starting area if if you're semi semi seasoned uh, in the game. Uh, however, it can be a very good starting location if you're looking for a challenge and are hoping to have a easier end game rather than a easier early game because the grass fields make the early game super fun and easy but as you get into the later game it can get more difficult and you may end up relocating to one of these other three biomes anyways and yes they are all accessible throughout uh this is all one world so if you load up in the rocky desert you can get to the grass fields the northern forest and the dune desert if you'd like to now for this game i'm going to choose the dune desert because i would like to start my new game there I'm going to make it a private session, because I don't want to play with anybody right now. And then I'm not going to skip the intro, because we're going to go through that with you. Alright, and once you're loaded in, you'll get this Figsit HUD OS. And now, the next big important thing you want to do is make sure you listen to Ada. She's super helpful. She's going to run you through the tutorial, and she's just going to inform you on everything. Attention, and then... Pioneer. The following instructional video is a summary of your impending duties as an exoplanetary pioneer for Fixit Incorporated. Fixit pioneers have three cyclical assigned pillars of work to ultimately accomplish project assembly. Use provided blueprints to build the necessary buildings. Chart the planet and gather resources to provide desired results and improve your infrastructure. Make sure to report any unusual discoveries to R&D for analysis. Expand your factories, outposts, and pipelines through automation and augmentation. That's it. Get to work and be effective. Warning, planet fall imminent. Please remain seated during full procedure. Atmospheric entry in five, four, Three, two, one. 
Now, you'll want to make sure you do listen to Ada. Make sure you watch that little intro. It'll help you out a little bit for the start. And make sure you listen to Ada throughout the rest of the game because she is extremely helpful in throughout throughout the entire game, especially through your first playthrough. All right. One step for man or man leap Welcome for mankind however that works to a b b your designated sector in the binary star system of akija i am ada also known as artificial directory and assistant tasked to support pioneers such as you in their mission you are the third of your sector to survive planetfall congratulations note objective based introduction initialized welcome to onboarding all right. Now, as soon as you land, objective. Please listen to Ada. Pod. The resulting materials will be repurposed to construct a habitat and utility base from now on referred to as the hub. Note, fix it incorporated as cost effective and efficient. We do not waste. Now, I'm going to be skipping what Ada says from here on out simply because I want to be able to help you guys out with my information more than just, you know, kind of playing through the first part of the game. Now, Ada did say uh, to dismantle the drop pod. That's our first objective here, so you're going to want to do that right away. And then the second objective is... I'm going to skip Ada, but you need to listen to her. All right, so your, your next objective is going to be to equip your Xeno Zapper. So open your inventory, throw that into your hand, or you could just double click it. So the next thing you're going to want to do is find the closest iron node to you, which there's a load around here in the desert if you started in the same area as I did. Uh, you will also spawn very close to limestone and iron if you spawn in the grassy field. So there's two iron nodes right here. Awesome. Now, next you're going to want to look at the purity of the iron before you just start mining on it. So this purity says impure on the right side there if you can see it. In parentheses now this little node like sticking off of the node will always be pure so you'll always get six from this and any other chunks you find around the world so ideally ideally you'll be looking for a normal or pure preferably pure uh, resource nodes so we're gonna go check this one this one's also impure, so we're not gonna we're not gonna mess around with these ones. We're gonna try and find a, a normal or pure node. Make sure you collect random stuff around the world too. Like this sulfur will come in handy uh, not too long down the line. Now, fighting your first enemy may be difficult, but my recommended strategy for these guys is just jump over them as soon as they charge you. It takes about four hits to kill them, and then they'll drop this little alien carapace, carapaca, carab, carab, however you want to say it. If you encounter any barrel nuts, or berries, or bacon, it'll look like a mushroom. Make sure you pick it up, and you can equip it in your inventory. And if you take damage, you can eat it. Alright, and we did stumble upon our first pure node. So I do believe we spawned over west a little bit. So if you did spawn with me in the dune desert here, just make sure if you want to find that pure node right off the bat, you just head straight east, and just watch out for that guy. He might cause you problems if it's your first time fighting him. So we're going to go ahead and pick up some of this iron ore till we got eh, just a, a decent amount, so like 20, maybe even less. Uh, it's, we don't need a whole lot right now. So then, once you've got some iron ore, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, build the hub. I always like to click this sort button when I open up my inventory. So these are the hub parts that we got from dismantling our drop pod. So when you go into the build menu, which is Q for me, you get this hub that you can build here now you can only build this uh once so well correction you can only build one of these at a time so make sure you place it somewhere that you'll like it so personally i would usually place it you know somewhere that's a decent uh distance between iron copper and limestone but since i'm not seeing any other types of nodes other than this iron. We're just going to place it uh, right here since the beginning portion of the game is mostly surrounded in uh, iron produ uh, production. 
So we'll just place it right next to the iron. So now once you place the hub, you get the craft bench and the hub ter terminal. I can't speak. So what you'll want to do after you've gotten through all the the very beginning portion of the game here, so you know, exploring a little bit, finding a node that you like, and placing down the hub, you'll want to access the hub terminal and get to tier zero, which is all the hub upgrades, upgrades, and then you'll be able to, once you're done with that, you'll be able to get all this stuff. And you'll want to start with hub upgrade one. So you'll see here that we need 10 iron rods. So we're going to select this milestone. It'll pop up in the right corner here for you, which is awesome. So it'll tell you what you need. And then you just you can click the close button or push escape to get out of there. And then you'll just literally just turn around with that little bit of iron, iron ore that you collected earlier. And you can either hold space or click down on this crafting button here. And you can make some ingots out of that iron ore you made. And then... You'll see that the numbers pop up next to the iron plates and iron rods here. And these here will tell you how much you can make with what you have in your inventory currently. So right now I can make 11 more iron ingots. I can make 6 iron plates with the iron ingots I just made over here. Or I can make 10 iron rods. And since we need 10 iron rods, I'm going to make 10 iron rods. So then we'll upgrade our hub. And you'll see you unlock new buildings, new equipment, and new parts. You have so, when you get to the next hub upgrade... You'll see that on the left-hand side it says complete hub upgrade two, and then it'll give you some hints. Uh, make sure you make sure you check those out every time you upgrade your hub, because it'll kind of help you figure out what you want to do next. So now I'm gonna skip to the next hub upgrade. Don't forget to go into that tier zero hub upgrade two and select your milestone, so you know what you're doing up here. Now I would highly suggest that before you get to the hub upgrade two, you want to build an equipment workshop, because with an equipment workshop you can build a little miner that will auto automatically collect resources for you. Now, when I'm building things like this, I like to go up here, I'll hover over it, click this little plus icon, it'll show up with a one. So I only wanna build one, so that's what, it, that's, that's what I want there. And then it'll pop up on my to-do list on the right side with what I need and how much of it I need. Now, now when you go to build, you can just craft all that and then you'll you'll know exactly what you need to get and exactly when you can build it all right and then even before we do the hub upgrade we're going to build the portable miner right away so just like i said before you can click on it you can actually right click it in the equipment workshop and add it to your to-do list now i'm going to add a few of these to my to-do list Now I'm only going to build one to start, because that's all we really need. Now as soon as you build the portable miner, it's going to pop up in your inventory here, and consume the resources of course. You're going to want to equip it by putting it in your hands, or double clicking it. You can kind of look at it while the first time you equip it, you kind of get a nice little glance at it. And then you just want to plop it down right there, by clicking, and then it does this little cool animation. and you can see that it's starting to mine the resources for you right away. That's super important because that's your first step to automation right there. All right, and as soon as you get those resources after making that portable miner, you just slide them into the hub upgrade, upgrade it again, and then you'll get some new objectives and hints on the left-hand side, and you'll, if you listen to Ada, she'll give you some more things to do. She'll help you out there. All right, and as soon as you get that third, excuse me, that second hub upgrade, you're going to notice that you got some cool stuff here in the back. You got a little biomass burner. Now, in the dune desert, where there is very little agriculture here, it's going to be kind of hard to find biomass to burn. Now, that's all right, because you won't be living off biomass for your entire life, which is a good thing. But you're going to want to go out and collect whatever leaves, flower petals, wood, whatever you can grab. So make that your next little mission to do that. Now, if you run into one of these guys, they're a little bit harder to fight because they kind of spit fireballs at you. Uh, I don't really have a, a tactic, per se, to fight them. Just kind of run around, try not to get spat on like I am all over the place. I'm not too good at fighting those guys. They're kind of hard for me. And then, on top of that, if you find one of these boys up here, 
Make sure you grab a lot of these whenever you run into them, because you can turn these into power cells or power shards, and uh, they are super useful. Now, if you go out exploring and your inventory gets kind of full, just make sure you drop it off in this little storage container that we've got here next to the hub terminal. Load up that biomass burner with some leaves, and don't worry, it's not gonna it's not gonna take any uh, it's not gonna burn any leaves when it's not connected to anything, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, another thing to do when you're going for the hub upgrade three is you want to make sure that you add the smelter to your to-do list and you're gonna need copper so you're gonna want to scan for copper ore go on a little exploration for a normal or pure copper node now if you're doing similarly what I'm doing uh, you'll find that there is a normal copper node just a little west a little north of the hub that we built back there now, don't forget you gotta fight these guys a lot of the time when you're by a resource node. So watch out for them. And this, like I said, this one's normal, so we're gonna go with this one. And earlier I built some of these miners, so I'm gonna drop a couple down here. Maybe. There we go. And there you go, just like that. Now, there's quite a bit of exploring to be had in this game, so don't get too lost trying to explore around and uh, go nuts in your exploration process. You want to you wanna look around for other resource nodes and things to collect and, you know, get your biomass, but just be careful you don't go too far and then, you know, maybe accidentally die or get lost. And as soon as you can make this smelter, I would place it down right nearby your biomass burner right here and then you can choose to either have it smelt iron ore into iron ingots or copper ore into copper ingots right now I'm going to do iron because that is the major resource that our hub upgrades are operating around so you just smack some iron in there and we forgot to make cable for the po the, po the power cable here so to connect uh, to create power cable you need to make cable and to make cable, you need to make wire into cable. And of course, that requires copper. So, now that you've got your cable, you just want to connect your biomass burner to your smelter. And there you go, it'll start working for you. All right, and as soon as you get those parts for the hub upgrade three, after building your first smelter and connecting it to power, maybe getting some leaves so that, you know, you could run your smelter, slide those parts in there, and upgrade the hub and you'll get of course your new buildings new parts new scannable resources that'll be limestone and you will get your new hints for hub upgrade 4 now the huge thing you want to think about here is we're gonna we're just gonna get rid of this for a second here we're gonna move this and we're going to put a new smelter we're gonna actually we're gonna put one we're gonna put one right as close as we can right here and then we're gonna build another one now something that makes this game easier is you can just pull out your dismantling tool which would be F by default and you can middle mouse button or the scroll wheel click on uh, objects with the with the scroll wheel and you can copy them now something you want to think about here is you want to build a power pole as soon as you can so you're gonna need concrete for this so you're gonna have to find a nice limestone node but when you build a power pole since you can only connect one connection from your biomass burner to uh, something that requires power when you build a power pole you can connect it to the power pole and then the power pole will have three more connections available so you can connect either two more objects and another power pole or three more objects or uh, buildings so we're gonna go find some nice limestone and as soon as we do that we will build a power pole and we'll be good to go all right so the closest normal node I found for limestone uh, also has a lot of vegetation around it so that's really good uh, it's kind of south kind of east it's almost right in the middle from our hub all right and once we make this power pole we're gonna connect it and we're going to need some more cable to connect our other smelter up here. 
real quick. All right, and then once you have two smelters, you can do one doing iron, and you can have the other one doing copper. And something else you can make that we can't quite do yet uh, is a constructor. And once you have a constructor, you can go from smelting the ore to ingot and making the ingot into product, like iron rods, plates, copper wire, stuff like that. Concrete. Uh, concrete you don't have to smelt. Just put it straight in a constructor and you, make, you can make concrete. And that'll come in huge handy when automating, but I'm personally not going to start off doing that quite yet. Don't forget to keep your biomass burner loaded with loads of vegetation. Alright, and once you get to hub upgrade 4, you know, same drill. Now, once you unlock the conveyor belts, that's when I personally will start to build constructors. Because once you unlock the conveyor belts, you can route the smelter straight into the constructor and it'll be completely automated. Now, how we make the constructors is a little different because we need reinforced iron plates. So we're going to add it to our to-do list and then to make reinforced iron plates, we're going to need iron plates iron rods to make screws and then we can combine these screws and iron plates into reinforced iron plates and once we have the right amount of reinforced iron plates here we will just come over here and place the constructors right in front of our smelters and we're going to try and we're going to try to follow the uh, blue guidelines but um it's not necessary. The blue guidelines there are to just to show that your constructors are lined up with your smelters so that when you go to connect your conveyor belts, they connect straight. But we didn't bother using it. It's all right. And then you can configure the constructor. We're going to do this one as iron plates, and this one can be wire. Don't forget to connect your constructors to your power source. And something you need to keep an eye on for your power is that when you go to your biomass burner, you'll see that it's producing a capacity of 20 megawatts. And right now we're consuming approximately 16 megawatts at peak for all four of our products running here, the two smelters and the two constructors. So you want to make sure that you don't exceed that capacity, otherwise your biomass burner will shut down. Okay, once you get to the fifth hub upgrade and you need to get to the sixth and final hub upgrade, you get the miner, which is a huge ordeal because once you place this bad boy down, you can literally automate everything from here on out, no matter what it is. Well, unless, you know, you don't have the required recipe for a set item that you'd like to build. You, then you just can't build it at all. But once you build this miner, you just slap it down right here, grab some of that nice conveyor belt, slide it from here into your iron smelter. You'll want to connect a power line to it. And since you have a second biomass burner, I would suggest you put two power lines onto one power pole, which then combines your power output which would be if you put some power in here it would go up to 40 so we're going to do that see how it just shot up to 40 for your capacity so once you do that you combine it it doubles everything and then you don't have to worry about you know connecting this one to just that and those two and then this one to just your constructors you don't have to worry about any of that you just put them together into one pole and then from that pole you go out to whatever you need and as you can see here we've got the Miner Mark 1, outputting to Conveyor Belt Mark 1 into the smelter. And you know, it makes ingots, just like that. And we're producing iron rods with this constructor here. And you could double this if you took a, another iron node from, say, over there, built another smelter and another constructor. You can make iron plates, and you could do the exact same for uh, copper as well, but uh, the closest copper is a little far, so we haven't done that quite yet. Something else that's kind of nice is you can throw in your materials early, and it'll pop up in here with what you've collected so far. So I have 51 rods, 6 plates, I'm done with the copper, and 5 out of 50 concrete. So now we know that we only need 49 iron rods, 94 iron plates, 
45 concrete and we'll be good to go. So now we only need to make that much. All right, and as soon as you've got all of your hub parts for the sixth and final hub upgrade, you can go ahead and slide those in there and upgrade the hub. And then you can scream hooray because you have completed tier zero of the eight tiers of the hub. Congratulations, you have unlocked building space and the world. Elevator. And then your next major project is going to be the space elevator, which is incredible. Also, something important to note out of hub upgrade six is that you can make biomass, which is way more efficient than leaves or wood. So you're going to want to make it a bunch of that as soon as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and stow away about half of that because you can make something called solid biofuel later on in the game as well, which is even more efficient than biomass. Now, the second and the last thing I'm going to recommend you do is make storage containers for your automation so that these constructors don't get piled up and uh, stop producing your product. And here we are. We have automated <coughs> iron, copper, and even concrete, which it'll get here in just a second. It might take a minute. But we've got the limestone coming from all the way over there. Strained it straight into this constructor to make concrete all right here we are grabbing our last couple pieces of concrete here to build a space elevator and we'll just jump up here and uh where do i want to place this um all right maybe maybe over here will probably be the best yeah we'll build it right here and there it is all the parts that we saved up for building up into this monstrosity gigantic I, I don't even words cannot describe this spectacle of a building and this isn't even it see that up there oh my god this is the best part hold on let me zoom in here we go here we go yep see that fork right there it's coming down all jaggedy as hell landing in the handles Oh man, this is just, this is probably one of the best things in this game. Oh, yes. All right, well, I think, uh, I think this is probably going to be the end of the video here, but, uh, oh, I put this on backwards. Well, this is going to be your main mission for the, pretty much the rest of the game. You're going to load parts up into this thing and unlock the next tiers. Right now we've got tier 0 finished. And tier 1s and 2 are open. So we're going to save those for the next video. And putting stuff into the space elevator will get us the rest of the tiers but for now, with this jam-packed informational video, I'm going to leave it at that. So... I hope you have a good one. Peace! So, the next objective is going to be to... Okay, you can't fucking equip. Really? That's fantastic. Well, fuck. Now, something that makes this game kind of fun is if you encounter, if you encounter, oh my god, and then you can scream hooray because you are done. Oh, I just lied to you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Holy fuck. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs>